Hi, this is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. I'm in San Jose at the eMetrics Marketing Optimization Summit with Avinash Kauchik, who is an expert in the area of analytics. You're the Google Analytics Evangelist. I'm, I'm the analytics evangelist for Google. There you go. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, what I wanted to ask you is what are the useful kind of pieces of information uh, that small businesses should be looking for? Right. I'm sure this will vary from business to business. Right. Uh, there's a special name for those. What are they called? Oh, key performance indicators. So, so that's sort or, of a very common K, or KPI, KPIs. 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 There's KPIs, abbreviations. Yes, yes. You can just think of them as as web metrics, and that's that's fine. Uh, but um, there are there are sort of the, the way I think about it is the questions that you can get answers for from web analytics, and and the way I I, I sort of frame it up in four questions. And I written a post about this a little while back, and it was all about what should small and medium sized businesses measure from their website mm -hmm. if they're just starting out. Um, and the first thing that I tell them to measure is uh, the answer to the question, where do people come from? It's very important. It's always intriguing to figure out how many people come from search? How many people are coming from my mom's site that links to me? How many people are coming from my industry association website where I have a listing? How many people are coming from Yellow Pages? Where do people come from to my website is a great first answer that you can get. And essentially the KPI you are measuring is the percent of visits across all traffic sources. That's the name of the actual report you look at. You look at distribution of visits. And that's a great way to start your journey because what you'll start to see is how many people come to your website in response to advertising you're doing? How many people come from organic search, which is free traffic? How many people come from various How things? How often do I need to track something like that? I would say if you're a small to medium-sized business, I would say at least once a week you should look okay. at it. Okay. Um, uh, depending on the kind of business you're running, maybe you look at it every few days. Especially, for example, let's say you just sent out an email okay. blast okay. to, to 1,000 like of your campaign or people. Kind. Yeah. You have to measure it the next day. You have to measure it in right. hours because even right. tools like Google Analytics are updated every hour. So you should be able to um, check that very quickly. But the other thing I say is measure um, not just how much traffic is coming, but this, use this other KPI I called bounce rate. Okay. And bounce rate is a great KPI because what it measures is this phenomenon from a customer perspective. It measures, I came, I puked, I left. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the English definition of it. Essentially what technically it's measuring is the number of sessions on your site with one page view. But that's boring. Um, but, but what you can measure then is, wow, I'm very happy I've got traffic from these sources, four sources. But look, source number one and two okay. are sending me traffic that bounce at 70%. And source number three sends me traffic that bounces at 20%. So that's actually better than the first two. So I need to look at the source and the bounce rate. That's exactly right. In order to tell what's happening. To, to understand uh, if there is a problem. And okay. the problem could be only twofold. The problem is either you're getting traffic that is of low quality. So if people are coming to your website to buy blue shirts, well, that's kind of not your business. Something's wrong there, right? right. So it's the wrong kind of traffic. The second problem, which is even more common, is they come on the wrong landing page. So let's say I did a search. For, this is true. I did not realize there is a thing called vegetarian shoes. I, I was not aware oh, of this. Oh, really? And apparently everybody sells them. And I'm a vegetarian, so I did a search for vegetarian shoes. And what are they made out of? Oh, they're, they're made of non-animal products. Right. Yes, and it's okay. very incredible. Uh, so, so bark of trees and all kinds of things. Yeah. Fascinating. Anyway. When I search for vegetarian shoes, try this in Google or Microsoft or Yahoo. Um, when I landed on the Skechers website, it was about the landing page was about swimwear, and I searched for vegetarian shoes. And I landed on Zappos website, and that page was about vegetarian shoes. So that could be the second problem. When Skechers notices I'm bouncing at a very high rate from their website, mm -hmm. it gives them a clue I might be landing on the wrong page. Okay. Something's wrong with their landing page. So sources, sources and bounce number rate. One. The second thing I encourage people to measure is what content is being consumed on your website. Okay. Look at your top 10 pa entry pages, mm -hmm. look at your top 10 most viewed pages, look at your top 10 product pages that get viewed, what products. And okay. it gives you a clue into what people are really interested in. And then do a quick bit of uh, back of the napkin analysis about, oh, so people are looking at these pages and things on my website, but I, what I really want them to look at and buy are these other things. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, there's like a mismatch. I want everybody to buy underwear, and people are only looking at shirts mm -hmm. or iPods. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it gives you clues as to what your customers are more or less interested in versus what you're shoving into their face. Right. 
and it allows you to create better merchandising strategies. And the third thing I would highly recommend, and maybe this is the place to start, is measure outcomes. And I'm a big fan of measuring outcomes, and I believe that in life there are only three outcomes from any website, just three. The first outcome is increased revenue, the second outcome is reduced cost, and the third outcome is increased customer satisfaction and retention, that's it. There is no other outcome that exists, no matter if you're a big company like Microsoft or you're a tiny company like Ralph Wilson and Avinash Kaushik Associates. Doesn't really matter. We're all driving for one of these three outcomes. So most web analytics tool will allow you to measure things like conversion rates and things like that. But even on my blog, for, which is a non-e-commerce website, and I don't ask, ask leads, I don't accept leads, I don't tell people to buy my book, I do nothing, it's just content. I have created three outcomes. I want people to sign up for my RSS feed. Mm -hmm. Don't give me a lead, just take the RSS feed. I want people to read about me, because it makes me happy. <laughs> and, and I want people to click on a page where there are links to conferences I'm speaking at. Okay. Those are my three outcomes. Every business owner, whether you're a small business, big business, medium-sized business, needs to go through this okay. exercise, find what the outcomes are, and tools like Google Analytics, Yahoo Analytics, uh, or paid tools like Omniture Web Trends, all allow you to measure outcomes that are not just e-commerce conversion outcomes, but also non-e-commerce outcomes. So we know how to measure conversion outcomes from the thank you page in That's particular. Right. That's right. Uh, any other particular ways to measure these other kinds of outcomes? Oh, absolutely. So for example, when people sign up for my RSS feed, they do so by clicking on a link and going to FeedBurner. I'm capturing that click. So you can capture outgoing links That's with exactly Google right. Analytics. Absolutely. Or, or with many other tools. I'm going to have to learn tools. how to do that from yes, you. Okay, yes, go yes. ahead. Or, uh, um, or, or let's say um, you have a video. Let's say you host it yourself. Right. Um, in which case, you can use event tracking from Google Analytics. You can encode the video. So when people come to your site, okay. your only outcome is people come and see a video of dancing bunnies that you've created. Well, that can be an outcome. You can identify as an outcome and measure number of people who start hit play and the number of people who completely watch the video to the end. And that's your outcome. So the thing is, you can measure many different kinds of outcomes now, using now, analytics if tools. If I've got a YouTube video hosted, I mean, on embedded, your blog. Uh, embedded on my site, can I uh, add that kind of coding? So you can't actually add it on your site, but if you publish your videos on YouTube as, as a publisher, right. um, it, you just log into your account, go to my account, right. and there is a, a link called YouTube Insights. And if you click on that link, YouTube Insight, it gives you exhaustive yes, right. reporting, right. including the number of people who played the video on WilsonWeb.com. Okay. I said that. That's right. Yes, yeah, right. WilsonWeb.com. Any more so KPIs we ought to be looking at, Avinash? Um, I think that the, the other really great KPI, and this one is for people like you and me that have a ton of content on our websites, non e just con we are content publishers, news stories, blog mm -hmm. stories, whatever. Uh, one of the things I really love measuring, uh, two measures are visitor loyalty and mm -hmm. visitor recency. Mm -hmm. What visitor loyalty measures is the number of times a person comes to your website in a given duration of time, which means they're increasingly loyal to you. Mm -hmm. So for example, I visit the website uh, of the BBC about six to 10 times a day. It's my wow. primary source yeah. of news and information. And so I have high visitor loyalty. It's interesting how American media really doesn't think the rest of the world exists. Yes, yeah, exactly. But the BBC really does a pretty I good love, job. I love the BBC, yes. Um, and the other one is recency which is mm -hmm. the gap between two visits. Uh, and I think that for a lot of um, people who especially publish content, measuring those, vis uh, those two KPIs helps you understand if over time you are into, it, you're bringing new people to your franchise but as, and retaining them. Or, or you simply have these one night stands, I call mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. People come, they read, they never come back again. It's, yeah. and one night stands are not great in real life. They're not great on the web either. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing with us, Avinash. Yes, absolutely. Tell me about your business, what you do. Oh, so I am the co-founder of Market Motive with my good friend John Marshall mm -hmm. and Michael Stebbins. I'm also the analytics evangelist for Google. And I have a blog called Occam's Razor. Which is a wonderful blog. Yes, thank you. It's, I think, what, in your field, it's the most readable blog and visually interesting blog by far. Thank you very much. So thank you for doing that for everybody. Absolutely. This is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today.